new study recently revealed the best evidence by far of the cosmic filaments that connect ancient galaxies to what is called the cosmic web. Mainstream scientists think these filaments in the cosmic web are created by the elusive dark matter which clumps together into filaments and causes normal matter to clump along these. Now so far we have not been able to detect any of this supposed dark matter. The more we look for this dark matter, the more normal matter we find, often in the form of plasma. For the first time scientists have spotted what they term a pipeline gas filament feeding an enormous galaxy that they believe formed when the universe was only 2.5 billion years old. This discovery seems to support a long-standing model that suggests star forming material is delivered to huge galaxies via these cosmic filaments. They have previously detected these filaments connecting to galaxies, but those were not able to capture detailed chemical information of this stream. Fu and his colleagues were able to identify the chemical signature of the gas streaming into the galaxy, thanks to a very rare and fortuitous alignment of some quasars. They believe these quasars are situated far behind the galaxy and could be used as a light source to help see the details in the gas stream more clearly. They were able to probe the abundance of chemicals in the filament using the light from the quasar. These showed that the stream lacked heavy elements such as aluminium, carbon, iron and magnesium. This implied that the gas had to be flowing in towards the galaxy as if the gas was flowing out of the galaxy it would have been enriched with heavy elements which are produced by the stars in the galaxy. These filaments seem to be the only way that this cold gas could get pumped into the galaxy without being disrupted by the hot atmospheric surroundings of the galaxy. They believe that this is a process that is important in understanding how these massive galaxies formed in the early universe. Now let's just take a step back here as there are many aspects to this report which would lead to a very different conclusion. We will start with the fact that this bulk of work focuses on what they consider massive starburst galaxies at high redshifts in the vicinity of background quasars. Add into this the fact that they detect gas around these quasars that appears to connect them to the galaxy itself. Many of you will be familiar with the brilliant Halton Arp and his extensive work looking at exactly these scenarios. He found a clear correlation to the proximity of quasars and a host galaxy, and speculated that these quasars were ejected from the host galaxies and would continue outwards from these and slowly develop into a companion galaxy later on. He also saw very strong evidence of this ejection process occurring in an X pattern through the centre of the galaxy. Here are some examples from the many many images that Halton examined. Let's just take another look at this galaxy. We can clearly see the quasars that they identify seem to be strung out below the galaxy. Not in a perfectly straight line, but more an arc shape. Halton felt that this arc curve may be caused by the galaxy rotating by up to a quarter of a turn. We also see a companion galaxy off on the other axis situated some distance from the host galaxy. Halton was also able to find examples of quasars that were clearly embedded in gas material that connected all the way back to the host galaxy. And this is exactly what we are seeing here as well. When Halton made these discoveries they were ignored as the redshift of the quasars would place them much further back than the host galaxy, despite the connection via the gas cloud. The redshift of these objects is not solely related to the recessional velocity, and hence their distance from us. Halton viewed that the redshift was instead an intrinsic component of the object, that as the object age would reduce. So quasars are initially born as high redshift objects and then slowly reduce their redshift. Once they evolve into a companion galaxy, their redshift would be almost the same as the host galaxy. The important point was that the redshift of the quasars was always an offset of the original host galaxy. And when we look at the redshift of the object, we do indeed see that the redshift of the quasar does reduce as you move further out. So the first quasar would have a 0.242 higher redshift than the host galaxy, and the second quasar only 0.075, so again as we're moving further out this is reducing. If we examine the two companion galaxies that they have identified, again here we see a much lower value for the redshift, as these in Halton's view would be more mature. 
Now these steps also fit quite closely with the quantization that Holt and Arp saw for these types of objects as they move further out from the host galaxy. This galaxy also reminds me of NGC 3067 and the Quasar 3C232, which Holt and Arp looked at. Here there was a quasar embedded in a hydrogen filament. Astronomers claimed that the quasar had to be situated behind the filament and could not be embedded within it. The argument was that the filament at the same redshift of the galaxy absorbed continuum light from the quasar, but did not show excited optical emission lines, proving that the quasar was much further back than the hydrogen filament. Halton, however, pointed out that in order to get to this conclusion, they needed to make a short extrapolation. The photons needed to ionize the hydrogen in the filament and make it fluoresce were at a shorter wavelength than those in the spectrum. The actual amount needs to be determined by the amount of hydrogen at redshift intermediates between the quasar and the hydrogen filament, the degree to which the filament was composed of small dense clouds, and the relative beaming angle between the ultraviolet and radio wavelengths of the quasar. These are all values they do not know, so they have to guess in order to derive their value. Now one important point to realize is that they see a direct link between these star forming galaxies and the neutral gas reservoirs that may fuel the future star formation. Again here we must consider the type of galaxy. These are considered to be active galaxies and once more these are exactly the galaxies that Halton had identified. These types of galaxies often had quasars associated with them and companion galaxies. We know that these types of galaxies also output vast amounts of materials from massive jets that they produce. It was along these jets that Halton found many of the associated quasars. The material was not flowing inwards, but was flowing outwards in his view, forming a sort of umbilical cord back to the host galaxy. Another important point to realize is that if you accept the idea that redshift is largely an intrinsic component of the host object, then this too would apply to the galaxy. This immediately would mean that this too is not a distant massive old galaxy. Instead, it is a younger, more active one in the process of creating newer, younger galaxies through the emission of these quasars. The increased activity will also lead to more energy within the galaxy and hence a higher current density, leading to rapid star formation. They identify interesting absorption structures towards both quasars, which include variable metallicities and what the author sees as a filament structure which will eventually collapse to form a cluster of galaxies. This and the unexpectedly large covering factor that they have identified for the quasars is much easier to explain if you take the bold step to see that these quasars are instead embedded within the filament. Where they identify a filament structure which is associated with the quasar, this is actually the umbilical cord connecting the quasar back into the large filament extending from the host galaxy. Galaxies undergo a life cycle, which includes the ejection of material which forms quasars, which eventually forms companion galaxies. We see all these phases in this galaxy and its surroundings. We see clear evidence of the existence of filaments connecting to the galaxy. We see companion galaxies located along two of the axes of the galaxy, and most importantly we see two quasars embedded within the filament, and these have a delicate filament structure that connects them back into this filament. At some point, coincidences cease to exist. You must start to see the data in a new light. Halton Arp was a pioneer in this field. Our universe is electric and screams this at every possible opportunity. You just have to be willing to shake off the old paradigms to see it come to life.